Our guests tonight started out in the theatre performing in plays by William Shakespeare and Arthur Miller. He's appeared in Paper Giants, Magazine Wars and on Dirty Laundry Live, live, live. But uh, you'd know him best from his side-splitting performances, playing politicians, pundits and paranoids on ABC's Sean McCullough's Mad as Hell. Please welcome, it's Tosh Greenslay! Hey, pal. Thanks so much for coming. Take Thank a seat. You. Thank you for having me. On the show. That's right. Thanks for having me on. Because we hang out sometimes. We do yeah, in in stuff. the in the catering room in of, the catering of, room. of Mad as Hell, on which you are a writer. I am. I write sometimes. I I write. The jokes don't necessarily get on. But <laughs> you play politicians all the time. My what I want to know is what do you have to go through to become a politician in like a in an acting sense? What do you think about? It's not so much building building anything on mm -hmm. as as it is like taking away all that makes you human. <laughs> and it's like, that's, that's basically right. what it is. Like, uh, they, they're, they're trained not to be people. Right. And so I did, like, when I first auditioned for the show, I got these pieces, I got, like, four audition pieces. Right. That, that's four. Um, <laughs> and, um, and I studied them. I, like, I just studied politicians. And, and they're horrible to listen to because right. they're not human beings. So you went and got an exorcism, got rid of the soul. That's it. Politician. Done. I'm soulless. Yeah, right. But they, they're, they're ideas. They're not people anymore. They stop being people when they're doing their job. They just right. become the idea. Right. And it's, it's quite disconcerting to right. play. Um, right. It's fun. But then you have to go do human stuff after playing. Yeah, a well, no, that's that's why that's where the pretending comes in yeah. of acting. Good times. Well, how did, how did you even get on Mad as Hell? Not, I didn't mean that. Is like, how did you even get on Mad as Hell? <laughs> how did you even get on it Mad makes, as Hell? No, I'm terrible. You're um, great. I did. Have you seen Mad as Hell? Tosh is great. <laughs> Dude, you're wonderful. Make Sean is a picky up, customer. He wouldn't just have anyone. Well, uh, Francis... I hope so because I, I hang around the writers' room. <laughs> Francis Greenslade, uh, who is not related to me in any right. way, um, he he taught me in second year of drama school. He like right. he directed a show, um, and then it was like years later, and I was doing nothing um, with my life. And um, <laughs> it's and, a happy, fun <laughs> show, <laughs> everyone. Um, and no, no, and he was like, and then I, I just got a call and was like, Sean McAuliffe wants you to audition for his show, and I was like, well, how does Sean McAuliffe know that I exist? Mm. Um, and I went there, and Francis was there, and I was like, did you do this? And he said, oh yes. And then he, like, he Sean had asked him for a few names. Mm -hmm. um, he gave him a few names, and then Sean got those people into audition. Mm -hmm. And then I and you just auditioned. nailed the audition. I think it's because I made a prop. Because I like I had there was an audition like one of the pieces was I was a policeman and I had to refer to a chart and my friend when he I was going through it with him was like you should actually make the chart and have it there I was like no that's a stupid idea he'll think I'm an idiot and then I went away and I was like oh maybe I should make the prop and so I made the prop and then I pulled it out and then everyone kind of went oh you made a prop but in a good way oh, and right. then and then I just didn't tell my friend that I did make the prop and I pretended that I did it. <laughs> that was a stupid idea. Did you get yeah, the role? Yeah, I yeah. Think it's, I think no, it's because you. that and I learnt the lines, which I read in the interview. That's why he gave, well, I think also because Kat Stewart's an amazing actress. Um, but he gave Kat Stewart the, the role because she learnt all her lines. I was like, I'm going to learn all the lines and then I'll get the role. Oh, well, there, there And then go. I did. Well, there you go. That's awesome. But you had to be in a truck. There was something about you being in a truck and, and explosives that you thought were fake may not have been. Oh yeah, no, that's season that? one. Season one, we blew up a truck. Right. For like, I think we got to the end of the season, mm. and I think there was like money left over or something. They were like, "How can we spend <laughs> like all of that numbers. money?" <laughs> well, it's like if your parents are like, oh, "I'll give you fifty dollars to buy a, a Christmas present," yeah, and then you you buy like your dad like a lollipop, and then you keep forty dollars fifty. That's yeah, the yeah. trick. That's yeah. the trick of how television works. Forty dollars, um, forty dollars fits. So you found a nine dollar fifty lollipop. lollipop. Oh, I don't know math. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's that's why he's an actor, I guess. <laughs> um, but no, no. Then we like we blew up a truck, and they put so many explosives into it. Um, and I had to be sitting in the truck beforehand. And I was like, oh, they, well, they, they won't put the explosives in the truck. Is the TV while I'm in the truck. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'll get in the truck. There'll be no explosives in the truck. And then <laughs> I'll get out of the truck and then they'll put the explosives in there and then it will explode. And they're right. like, oh, no, no, it's a single take. So they'll be there. I was like, oh, but they won't have the fuses in them because the fuses are what make them. Like, no, 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 because no. we can't have someone running in to put the fuse in there. So the f everything's in there, but we promise we won't press the button. And I was like, <laughs> oh, OK, good. 
Um, and I was like, well, it mustn't be... Can I read be... over my contract again? Yeah. No, well, it mustn't be, like, a huge explosion. Then, like, it must just, like, blow the doors out the back, like, have some smoke or something. And then I got out of the truck and walked over, and went... as soon as I was clear, I saw them, like, they did the signal. And then the truck just, like, <laughs> movie exploded. Like, it was... So... It was... The, the fireball went at least, like, three or four storeys high. It went so high. It was so big. I was like, that's, that's not good. <laughs> well, it was good. I enjoyed watching it. And I think they, they muted the sound on that clip, um, or it just cut away just before. You can audibly hear me on camera go, oh, like that. <laughs> Oh, man, I don't want to get fired from that show because I don't know how they're going to do it. They're like, no, 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 you stay in the truck this time. <laughs> Just stay in the cannon. Go in that cannon there. Um, you, I, you speak about this to, to us sometimes backstage. You're, you're a star now. You're on TV. You're, all there. you're on this show. Why not? Quite famous. But you, you kept your day job even when you kept going into acting. Yeah, yeah no, I work in a call centre. What's so you that? can call me up. Yeah, I work in a call centre. Oh, cool. Um, no, yeah, because well, at first I didn't. I quit it, and then I realised that after the sh series of the show finishes, mm. there's not like just more money that just suddenly comes into your life, and that's. I think that's. I think that's <laughs> the life of here's an Australian your, here's actor. It's a magical acting money. Like, 